The core of my work is always um, centered around the sublime feminine. The areas that I've explored um, that have given me what I've been looking for, that um, sensation of soulfulness, of um, timelessness, um, have taken um, various forms. Uh, I've been to the big sky, uh, big nature of New Mexico. I've been to Provence, um, which has a very special light, uh, explaining, frankly, very much as to why it has attracted so many artists over centuries. And I've been to uh, North America, upstate New York, and the Catskills. What I'm interested in is this constant meandering, this journeying, this tension between the female form and the nature that surrounds it, um, between these curvilinear uh, forms of the woman's body with um, the environment, whether it be hostile, in the case of the desert, for instance, or whether it be inviting, as is the case, for instance, with Provence, um, or just simply majestic and beautiful, as was the case in uh, the Catskills. In the case of Provence, there's something interesting that happened. Um, I went searching for interesting space and I encountered an uh, abandoned bauxite quarry uh, in Beau de Provence. Um, I entered, I wasn't really meant to, but I did, and uh, there was a whole universe there, very beautiful, very jagged, very symmetrical, very geometric in a sense, uh, which lent itself actually quite beautifully to my own exploration uh, pertaining to the geometry of the body. So I immediately started seeing these juxtapositions, this potential for juxtaposition between the human figure and the nature that surrounded. it. And um, I eventually, after I took the photographs, um, I eventually found out when I came back to London, after speaking to a friend who knows a great deal about that particular area, that actually um, that very query was the query used by Jean Cocteau in 1960 when he filmed Le Testament d'Orphée, uh, which is one of his great iconic films. I grew up in Paris. It's a film which very much registers in my own repertory, um, cultural repertory. And when I went back to look at my own photographs, I started seeing the story of Orpheus and Eurydice, um, the underworld and light. I only ever work with dancers, uh, either contemporary or classic uh, dancers. And uh, the reason is that I'm, I think they just, there's, there's, a certful, there's a certain grace about their movement, about the way they go about, about the, the way they, they, they lift their arms and legs. And um, it's a very different muscular dynamic than with a regular model or a fashion model per se. And as a result, I think that because they're able to recenter themselves somehow uh, in a very soulful way, that enables them to connect much better with the nature that surrounds them and, and dance with this nature. So I come from, um, I'm, I'm Persian originally, I come from Iran. I left in 78 because of the revolution. And most unfortunately, I have not gone back to my own country. And I've held on to my country and its heritage through culture. Um, revolution means something to me because as a child, I went through it myself. I've always had a great deal of nostalgia, of almost romanticism. Um, thinking of my own country and I felt that I could probably find or find parallelisms or um, connections with people in Cuba uh, who probably would have felt the same sense of history, change, um, sentimentality towards their own history and their own personal stories. Uh, it is a question of personal story and that's what I was trying to explore and identify. Um, it was about connecting, it was about talking to people, it was about really 
digging deep into the psyche of the various characters and personalities, wonderful people who I managed to meet, um, encounter, and, and, um, and some of whom I call friends now, really. We've kept in touch. Um, it was a wonderful memory. Um, very soulful people, very people for whom life means a lot, uh, who have a great deal of hope and despair. It's a society of opposites, uh, and you, you encounter these opposites, these dichotomies that exist at all times as you progress through your own journey. Um, but they're very proud, they hold their head up high, um, they are full of energy, full of dance, full of music, full of, full of positivity, which is incredible given that the country really has changed very little since the revolution uh, at the end of the 50s. So one of the most um, memorable moments during my journey, in Havana in particular, um, and I think it's probably the episode in my personal journey in Havana that stuck the most in my mind and which really emphasizes the thematics that I'm exploring here, which is uh, about beauty and dereliction, about dereliction in itself being beautiful, about the aesthetics of dereliction. And that has to do with my encounter with Mrs. Alonso, who is in her 90s, a, a grande dame in her own right, one of the greatest families from pre-revolutionary Havana. And um, she still lives in her home, if you can imagine. And I had the privilege of entering that home. She opened her home wholeheartedly. Um, and it was a stepping back into time. Nothing, and I mean nothing, had changed since 1951. Um, she had 11 children, they all passed away, her husband had passed away, and she just lived in this relic of memories and nostalgia, including the gramophone, which dates back to the 50s, the music on the record player, which she plays on a daily basis, um, with crumbling ceilings. She's on $10 a month, uh, and that's all she has, and yet she holds on to this incredible sense of e emotional belonging, of, of pride in her own story, in her own history, in her country. Uh, as you can tell, she chose not to leave, and most people chose to leave at the time. And as I was walking through her past, her life, in this very grand home, very beautiful, I was with a friend, and this friend of mine um, Maria, happened to be wearing an outfit which was very much in the style of 50s outfits, and it wasn't planned. And it was almost cinematographic, it was spontaneous, and that's the beauty of photography in a sense, is that I just looked at her walking through this house and I imagined that this could have been or should have been a young Mrs. Alonso walking through her house in the 50s, and I just said to Maria, stop stop here, stop there, and I snapped away. Um, and that's what turned into a series of images from that particular day.